Hey friends, you've got Renee Rivera here on my healing journey as well as on yours or someone who you love uh, helping them out with getting better and finding their healing. Today I want to talk with you about actually journaling, not just journaling your food intake, but also uh, different things that happen in your day that could be a culprit to your reactions. So um, when I first started seeing my integrative specialist, that was something that was suggested to keep a food diary. That's what they call this, but I've morphed mine to be more. Um, and at the beginning, I was just trying to figure out how do I stay organized and keep things long. So the first things that were just difficult to do for me was just to make sure I had enough water in my you know, consumption as well as being able to track things as it happened. I am not a person like many of you might be that can get on an app and then you just plug in the thing you ate and then you move on. That's not me. What I found that worked best for me was uh, at the end of the day when I'd lay in bed, I would grab my journal or whatever that form was that I was um, tracking things in and that's where I would jot down. Here's what I had for breakfast, lunch, dinner, my snacks. Um, as well as some other things. And I'll share what those other things are in a moment. But I wanted to first share with you some of the systems that I tried. Um, I've now been journaling for over four years, four years for sure, consistently every day prior to that. Honestly, my memory is not letting me remember before that, before moving here and getting better. Um, at that time, I was seeing a different doctor. I know I was jotting things down, but not <clears throat> not as regular, regularly as now because I've learned that we are our best sleuths and it is great to be um, in connection, partnered with having an integrative specialist as well as other specialists that help you target certain issues that you have. But on a daily basis, that's your job, not your doctor's job to write down the things that have um, affected you and it can affect you both positive and negative. And so let's start about like the systems. Let's talk about the journaling systems that I did. At the beginning, when I was like, I'm gonna start doing this, I went out and bought um, different kind of planners. The, uh, the kind that you would get like to plan academic year, whatever. So I got things like these, these little mini journals. And I'm like, oh, maybe I could do that. And so I got one that was something like this where it has some space where you can write things down, but I was finding that all these different little, uh, you know, calendars that you carry around in your purse, the purse size ones were just not big enough for me. And many of them were just shortchanging me for the Saturday and the Sunday entry. It was, I could only write four words on there versus sentences of explaining how I felt. So um, thankfully, I only used money on those things like at the dollar store, Dollar General, um, you know, clearance, because I was still trying to figure out the system. So I didn't want to invest a lot of money in my journal yet because I needed to figure out what I was most comfortable with. Then I morphed into um, just using a notebook. And then at the top, I would just put my, you know, put my date the day, the date, and then just journal the things that I wrote there. Like here, as soon as I finished eating my third small plastic bowl of chili, I felt a huge slump in energy. And then it just goes into what else I did that day, um, what else I ate, where did I go? Anyway, so I did start with this kind of system with just writing a date. <laughs> and then things I could remember and then moving to the next one. But I found even going into a notebook like this and having several entries in one, um, what would you call it, in one page. And with my sloppy writing, it was hard to go back to research something like, oh, I remember, you know, I had that item, that same, I went to that same restaurant and I had something, what did I have there? Why am I reacting now? And is it the same thing that I had back then? Then I ended up morphing it to loose leaf paper because I was running through notebooks quite a bit and just 
still trying to organize, get a little bit cleaner. So then I went to a notebook or what do you call it? A three ring binder. Filled this puppy up with um, loose leaf. But by the time I finished filling it up, I thought this is still a messy system. Um, then I even tried to go back to <laughs> smaller journals where it was a column like this. And I found that was even difficult to do because of space. It was a little more organized, but I still needed more space. So I'm just getting onto something in regards to organizing. And I ended up morphing to my current system, which I absolutely love. I've got um, a large planner. It's those, uh, I forget what they're called. They're, um, it's a business planner. It's a weekly, monthly planner. And I use the weekly entry. And I have a lot more space, if you can see. <laughs> it takes up almost the whole screen. I've got a lot more space to journal on. And I'm able to keep track of things. And why this was effective for me was, um, I believe it was back in November, I, um, I had a bee sting. This is just an example. Back in November, I had a bee sting. And within a week, then I was logging how my body was reacting to the sting. Within a week, I had this crazy rash on my body and all the different symptoms I was recording. And so by a month later, when my skin was just all broken out, I was able to, um, you know, go into my, uh, I forget what it's called. It's a health chart where you can message your doctor. And I was able to go back to when it first started, November, November 5th. I mean, and it's only because I documented everything. November 5th was the bee sting. November 11th was this crazy rash showing up on my chest. Um, and then each date of when something else happened, when it hit my shoulders, when it hit my thighs, when it hit my back, what it was doing to my ear. Um, so that is a benefit is what I'm trying to share with you. It's a benefit of having an organized system versus, I guess, just journaling it like I did in the loose leaf or in the three ring binder. Um, so my current system is one of these larger date books making sure one page is just half the week, the other page is the other half of the week. And then what I actually log in here now is how my body felt. If it, if it was something that was not good, I always re, re, um, record that. But the other thing's what I will record. So that's the thing that you can add to this. First, find your system that works for you. And like I said, mine is a two pages open that I can document everything. And then what I do is, if anything was a negative reaction to my body, I put a sad face, such as this. This is an example. I put a sad face um, because I had a mold hit that day. And again, my issue is SIRS, chronic inflammatory response syndrome, and I am trying to avoid all moments of mold, uh, all environments of mold. Um, so I'll put, a, I'll put a sad face. If it's something to pay attention to when there was a reaction, I will also put a star if it was like a major reaction. So that was like a mold hit. I'll also put a star by something if I'm a star and a question mark. Um, if I've introduced something new and I know that as I'm logging things thereafter for a couple days, I'm watching as I'm, as I'm logging how my body's responding each day, I'm trying to keep in the back of my head to pay attention to if anything new shows up because of that new thing that I um, had introduced. So there's definitely a star when there's a new introduction or when there's some kind of a reaction. The other thing that I do that I look for is I write down um, not only the food, but I write down my environment. Where was I that day? So if I was babysitting grandbabies, uh, I even put down how many hours was I doing that because even my exertion of energy affects my health. Uh, keep in mind, um, when I first was hit with this, I was bedridden 
or when it was first diagnosed and we moved, I then went into a huge dip and I was bedridden for almost six months. I'm still able to get up and make my meals, run to the bathroom, but my brain was mush, my energy was gone. Cool thing is that though I had that happen to me, um, I actually have it recorded in here when I took my first walk. It's, it's um, documented in my journal of today I succeeded at something and that was a smiley face. It was a first. I took my first walk, um, so that kind of thing. So the other thing that I would put besides where I went, I just put down environment, you know, was I at home? I, usually, I don't write if I was at home, but if I was at somebody else's home in a store, was I outdoors? What was the season? I'm trying to keep in mind all of that, um, such as like in the fall, um, when I was car shopping, keeping in mind, somebody had to bring that to my attention that Renee, remember, you got all these dead leaves outside. Your breathing is going to be different when you're outside um, and going in and out of these cars. You're going to also be getting the mold hits from all of the stuff that's in the environment. Everybody else around you are having these, not everybody, but many people around you. These are the ones that brought it to my attention. They were having heightened allergic reactions um, to the season. And many were popping allergy pills and stuff like that. And for me, I was just, just an itchy nose and itchy uh, throat. But that reminded me of, okay, what season am I in? So that can be a clue to why am I reacting a certain way in my, um, in my body. And then again, I mentioned activity. Did I drive that day? Because driving and how long that can even affect my dip in energy. Um, was I messing in a garden? Did I have conversations that day? Um, was there a project I worked on? If I had a job, I'd be logging what happened at work. And I'll talk about that in a little bit. And even talk about my stress level or anything that felt a little more intense or off for me. And then like personal skincare products, like um, most of the time I don't do makeup. And so when I was starting to wear makeup again, I'd even write down what went on my face. And if I was trying a new product, I'd make a little star by it. That was something new. I had just tried, you know, just tried a new uh, <laughs> thing for the dark eyes, the concealer. So a little note of that. If I was changing laundry soap, I'd make a note of that. Um, or changed out soaps. I even noticed like, I buy the same soap from my friend that makes everything natural. But I've even noticed that when I switch out bars, when one is worn out, put the next one on, it, it like will take a day or two for my body to um, get accustomed to the next bar, though it's all the same ingredients. It's kind of funny. And then if I had any new um, supplements that were introduced that day, I would also put a little star there, make sure I put a star because there's so many new things that could be introduced through, excuse me, through my healing process, including even the supplement. Did I increase a supplement today? Um, so I'm trying to pay attention to that. And then the other thing are chemicals. So I'll mark down if I cleaned my house that day or um, if I noticed an air freshener at somebody's home set me off um, in an allergic way or notice like their soaps, like I can't do other people's soaps. Um, mine have to be a natural one or very, very for sensitive skin and the ones with perfume make my stomach turn and just get me. Um, as well as what new items maybe have you bought and brought into the home. An example of that would be, I wanted to surprise my husband with um, a little bench, <laughs> had it shipped, brought it in and Oh my word, you take the plastic off and it was just these fumes. Uh, I can't remember what it's called, but it was just the fumes of this bench. It's like it was giving me a headache and I'm like, there's no way that's gonna go at the end of my bed. And then I realized it's compromising my breathing having it in another room. So I had to return it. So he didn't get the surprise. So those are the things anyway. So food, environment, your activity, personal care, you know, what cleansers are you using that day or chemicals in your house? What have you come in contact with material wise um, supplements as well as new things you brought in your home? Those are notes that you want to make sure that you're documenting in your, um, I call it the food journal, but really your day journal of, of what's happened. And so an example, um, of one of the things that I put here, this is today at work, I felt heavy in my chest. 
As soon as I walked in, they were doing construction and I felt it. Was it mold or was it construction? And then I made a little note. When they previously did construction, I felt the same chest pressure. And just a little note about that. Um, this was several years ago and I was documenting this stuff. And this is when I was still going into my work environment. And I realized because of my journaling, how my body was feeling, I was realizing that there was mold um, in several of the buildings that I previously worked at. Um, same company, but they own several buildings and different um, meetings I was going into. I kept having these different reactions. And um, even somebody's house, I even wrote down, you know, how I was reacting and trying to decide, was it the dogs? Was it some wetness somewhere or was it mold? And it's nice to look back at this old journal from a couple of years ago. And I've since then have been able to decipher I can't go into any of those buildings at my old job. And, I, and since then I've actually left from that company, but I had to approach my boss and ask to no longer work on site because it was making me sick. And I had documentation of all the days of the headaches, of the chest pressure, um, how my body was reacting and he allowed me to work from home. And then I've got here again, another time when I went somewhere, um, like a praise when I was able to get into somebody's house that previously I always reacted to because um, the heightened inflammation that I deal with with SIRS, the chronic inflammatory response syndrome, you can cross react, react to things that um, actually your body really isn't even allergic to, but I was, but because I was getting the healing now and working the mold out of my body and working the inflammation out I had documentation here where the first time I was able to go into a relative's house that had husky dogs and to not have the um, asthmatic reactions that I used to have. So I've got praises written in there as well. So that would have been a smiley face. And then even here of when I went to another relative's home and where I documented, I wondered if I was having a mold dip because I had this huge dip in energy. They wanted me to take a tour of their their second floor and I said, I'm, I'm, my energy just feels like it got sucked out of me and I don't think it would be wise of me to be taking your stairs going up and down. I don't know that I have enough energy to drive home if I did that. Um, and so that, that night I was writing, writing down, here's where I went, here's what I did. I cleaned her dishes, I cleaned the crock pot and immediately felt the dip and where I was standing when I felt it and then I was diagnosing the other parts of the house that I had gone into. And then even my, um, my deciphering, I wrote down here, was it mold, was it dogs, or was it because I had a busy week? And since then, I realized, yes, the dogs do set me off, but even more, there's mold in that person's home. They have a very wet uh, cellar kind of basement. Um, and so since then, I've been able to say, I'm sorry, I can't go in your home anymore and I've been able to protect myself. So anyway, those are some, um, some tips on journaling. It not only helps you decipher, uh, it also lets you know maybe how long it's been since you've tried something. Like in here, I wrote something down about strawberries. I wrote something down about um, like a salad. You know, like for me, I can't do romaine or I can, I can eat it but there'll be a response. The day after, I will always have a, like a diarrhea reaction in the middle of the day. Um, and I learned that because I've always documented it. Today I had this, and then the next day I had this reaction. The other thing I learned was like a sweet potato, um, potato chip. All the ingredients were safe for me and realized um, each time I was having it, it stinks. Um, I finally put the pieces together after maybe the fourth time because I always thought it was something else mixed with it. Um, when I isolated it, ate it without having anything new that week um, being introduced, I was able to isolate that test and realize, oh yeah, those sweet potato chips within an hour were the ones that were making me have this huge breakout and uh, even irritating the eyes and even causing some oozing in my ear. So this system can very much help you avoid those culprits <laughs> that are causing you reactions right now that you could be 
you know, your body could be cross firing and just um, say no to. The nice thing is when you're able to start reintroducing um, things, you might be able to see how you, how you combine something. Like for me, it was a, a certain restaurant. I was getting the, their chipotle meat mixed with the romaine. And, and at that time, I couldn't figure out, was it the avocado? Was it the seasoning in the meat? Was it the romaine? And when I finally broke it all down into individual pieces, that's where I learned it was a romaine lettuce that was doing it to me. Um, anyway, so this helps you be a better sleuth <laughs> to avoid bad reactions, but it also helps you um, to see all of the, the good that has been able to come into your life. Like I said, my, my realization of, wow, my first walk is documented in here or um, how I was getting headaches from my environment, my old environment and my, uh, my chest aches and being able to protect myself by saying I can no longer be there. Um, and standing up for myself, as well as even getting the, the, the treatment like for my bee sting and then that rash that came after it and being able to discuss that with exact dates and when things came on and to be able to see that the bee sting was separate from this rash. However, it stirred up my immune system, as one doctor had said, that could have made an opening for this other virus to come in and attack. So you learn a lot about your body <laughs> when you are doing that journaling. So I hope this helps. Hope it encourages you. I hope you find the system that works for you. Um, there are apps online. I know there are um, business, we call it Google calendars, things like that. You can put notes in there. I'm just one that I'm, as my husband says, I'm a, I'm a short pencil. I like to document and write and journal. And this just helps me get it out. And then I can review it later. So I hope it helped you and, or your loved one, because I know it sure did help me. Um, and then every time that I go see a doctor or my specialist, um, they will ask for what did we eat in the last two weeks? And I just I can just bring my notebook or I can just even make a photocopy of it and carry it instead of my whole book. Um, and I just found in a clearance section, the ones that are, um, you know, like middle of the year, like a teacher's book, it, it like starts in July and ends the following. So it gives you like a year and a half, maybe. Um, you can find those in the clearance section at Walmart a lot of times, like for a dollar or uh, stores like Ollie's or whatever. So just some hints. You guys have a good day. Chat with you again soon.